Hello, well welcome to this, our latest insolvency short. And this short will be on one of our international insolvency cases. And it's of course the Cambridge Gas Transportation Corporation and the official committee of unsecured creditors of Navigator Holdings PLC. 2007 square brackets, one appeal cases, 508 in the Privy Council as a result of appeal from the Isle of Man. And it's up to the Privy Council, and in particular the opinion of the Privy Council, as given by Lord Hoffman, that we're deeply interested in. What is it that Leonard Hoffman, Lord Hoffman, had to say about universalism and the way in which different countries would cooperate or not with each other in respect of their respective insolvency laws. Well, the facts are this. You have some businessmen who borrow $300 million on the New York bond markets to purchase five ships. Uh, and those ships are Primfaki registered in Liberia. However, the ownership of those ships is relatively complicated. Indeed, Lord Hoffman says this to be so, in his opinion, where he tells us that we have Isle of Man holding companies who in turn have a group structure whereby their own, that's to say each ship is owned by an Isle of Man structure, and that structure itself, special purpose vehicle, is owned by another structure in the Isle of Man. Ultimately, the group companies there are owned by BVI, British Virgin Island, and Cayman structures as well, meaning that we have a very, uh, very uh, congested, complicated fact pattern in terms of where ownership lay across, as you've just heard, four or five jurisdictions. Meaning when, of course, a plan is put by both the debtors and the creditors, the bondholders in the Federal Bankruptcy Court for the Southern District of New York for a plan pursuant to Chapter 11, that we have issues about enforcement coming to the fore in and recognition of bankruptcy proceedings, as they're called, because it's Chapter 11 we're discussing, uh, across these multiple jurisdictions. So the question for the courts in ultimately the Isle of Man, uh, where these, these boats were positioned, these ships I should say, never call a ship a boat, uh, was whether or not those courts in the Isle of Man could recognise the Chapter 11 proceedings and therefore cause the office holders actions that plan the chapter 11 plan to have effect in the isle of man well eventually the case goes right through the appellate court structure in the isle of man and then reaches as you know the privy council where the lord hoffman holds that the office holders can be assisted at common law pursuant to the long-held principle of universalism which stretches back, as he says, like a golden thread to the 18th century judgment in Solomons and Ross, where courts would recognise different jurisdictions' bankruptcy proceedings and allow the plans to be instigated uh, as a result of that recognition. In this instance, of course, then, a Chapter 11 plan that, in essence, was was uh, a plan of the creditors, those bondholders in New York. So in summary, we'd say that Lord Hoffman's judgment in Cambridge, gas transportation, is a very progressive, thoughtful judgment that builds on the hard work that had been done in HIH, in that Australian and English law difference in pari passu distribution case where we see uh, recognition much like in Solomons and Ross 
both of which those cases are subject to a different insolvency short, which you can mull on. But for now, and until we get to Rubin, we would say that Cambridge Transportation and Lord Hoffman's opinion stands for universalism across different jurisdictions and recognition of different jurisdictions' bankruptcy provisions. Until those cases, then I bid you goodbye. Goodbye.